one of the many processes I go through after material is cut up, which in itself takes a little bit of time. These are the sides to the three foot riverbed hog. And each one goes through its own process. To get rid of the blade marks. And to get rid of the sharp edges. And this has to be done without exception before the build begins. So I guess you could call this a day in the life of Joseph at Green Mountain Gold Trap. Greetings, everybody. It's me. <laughs> but before I forget, um, let me show you Wayne out in Canada. And there's a few of you who have commented on the specimen rock. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. But it is soaking in CLR and it has been for probably about three or four days now. I just saw it bubble. Really can't see too much of a noticeable difference. It's going to take some time, but so I got that done. 100 magnetic probes ready for the well, not ready. Um, they're curing right now. Ready for the final step of completion, which is soldering all the end caps on them. 100 of them sitting there, folks. So there's a lot. And, and don't get me wrong, I am not complaining in the least bit. I love what I do. I absolutely love it. Being my own boss, you know, 
working in my own environment um, with damn good tunes. I've got a, a kick-ass stereo system in Iowa. I think that's how you pronounce it, Iowa, Iowa. Um, good stereo system. Three good speakers that go with it. I have one up there in the corner over there. I have one over in the corner over there. And I have one up there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's pointing straight down. Um, and I usually have it cranked up pretty good. Because <laughs> when I start running machinery, I can't hear. So, hey, I got to have it turned up, right? Wish I could have it on right now so you could hear it, but I can't. So, um, yeah. So, in the, the day in the life of Green Mound Gold Trap, I mean, it's not just about building gold traps. First, I'll go through um, the base. I'm not going to tell you everything, but um, you've got, you know, you're dealing with shipping. You're dealing with um, when orders come in. You've got to log into the website. You've got to print out your, um, your invoice. You have to switch it to... Um, you know, once you get to the point of, of almost shipping, partially shipped, and then you have to go to your UPS business account, and you've got to fill out of the information to where it's getting shipped to, and then you transfer, when you print that out, you print out your label, you transfer all your information, the information, to the other side, which gets cut off and filed. Um, tracking number, then you got to contact the customer and let them know what their tracking number is. I deal with phone calls from potential customers and customers with questions and so on and so forth and emails. There's the website, web design, and dealing with all of that. Um, there's going and getting certain materials like my aluminum rails. I pick them up locally. Um, the seal wall, I pick that stuff up locally and it all has to be cut up. And when I come back with a with a shipment of it, then I get I get it all cut up and and put it in the inventory. Um, I get the polycarbonate locally and when I come back with either two to four sheets all that has to be cut up on the panel saw um, and going by specific measurements and you do find ways to speed up your production. <clears throat> what I did here was you'll see a bunch of different measurements already marked all over the saw everywhere I got measurements all over the place so that speeds things up and that thing is a blessing um, because before when I first started I had a panel a, a pallet on its side so you'd be looking at it this way but it was standing up and I built a shelf underneath so that the uh, the sheet would rest on much like it does on the wheels on the panel saw the sheet would rest on there and I had it set up over here and so I would have to put my piece in there and have to measure it mark it up top measure it mark it on the bottom go up and check the measurement you clamp it all on to the pallet check the measurement tap it lay down on your side check the measurement tap it stand back up check the measurement tap it it was taking me <laughs> I don't know <laughs> to cut up two sheets just two it was taking me a good three, four, five hours, a good half of a day. Well, not half a day. I work, I work long days. Um, but it would take a long time. With this, I can cut up four sheets in probably 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes. So that's really sped things up. What a blessing. What a blessing. Rather expensive, but a very good investment. Um, so you've got all the shipping stuff. Today I've been working on... Um, cutting up um, styrofoam for inside the shipping boxes to protect the, protect the product that's going out. Um, there's ordering. I deal with a company, um, Unicor Boxing Group, I, I, um, Container Corp. Unicor Container Corp, Unicor Container Company, I can't remember the name. Um, I order my, my boxes through them, so you got to deal with companies like that. And they can't bring a big rig onto my in my location so I've got to go meet them <coughs> and uh, offload the truck into the van and then I got to bring them back here and unload them um, there's I mean tubes the tubes everyone has a certain amount of holes in it so I cut up I don't know a good four five ten foot lengths and then you're dealing with 
um, measuring every single one, marking all your holes, and then drilling hundreds and hundreds of holes. And I have jigs for all this stuff, but it's still, it's time consuming. It's time consuming. Um, I have marks. You know, that's all clamped down. There's a line. There's a line drawn on the plate of here for one of my jigs, so I just clamp that down. And of course, this is laser guided. So that makes it a little bit easier. And then after you drill all your holes, you got to bevel one end of the tubes on here. Then you've got to clean them all and then put them in inventory, which are up here for each size gold trap. Um, there's cutting up when I get uh, this I have to order and it gets shipped to me. Sheets of the flat expanded metal stainless steel. They get cut up into strips. I have to cut all that up. And then each piece on each side of the cut you have to grind that down because I don't want my customers getting cut. Um, my gold traps do not have any sharp edges on them whatsoever. Um, I try to get them out the door as clean and as nicely looking as possible. Uh, let's see, what else is there? There's all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Each build takes, you know, over, you know, about over five hours, close to six hours. There's, it's in between a two-day span because there's a pause point. Um, there's keeping the shop clean right now. It's uh, kind of messy. <laughs> and that's just from cutting up, what, two sheets plus the styrofoam today. And that's, that's a pretty good mountain of, of stuff underneath the saw. Um, a lot to it. There's just a lot to it. But now I've gone and added um, dousing rods. Those are really quick to build. Um, dousing rods, all that stuff has to be cut up. That gets shipped. All the pieces and parts get shipped here. All that has to be cut up. Um, there is the um, now the magnetic probes. So dealing with shipping and, and orders for those as well now. Um, keeping your books, your inventory, uh, just everything. Everything. There's just so much to it. And like I said, I absolutely love doing what I do. I, I get down here probably about, oh, between 8.30 and 9.30 every day. And I'm down here until 7.30, 8 o'clock at night every day. Every day. Pretty much seven days a week unless I go to the river or um, go up to my mom's, which I'm hoping to get up there again maybe next week. I don't know. And it looks like my battery's going to die, so I better end this. Of course, I could... Uh, I could if I can find the where is it right here get it plugged in get it plugged in quickly before this dies come on come on come on come on there we go no boy there. I think that's working. It's still saying it's dying. But, you know, maintaining maintaining equipment, keeping that clean. Um, just, I mean, there's a whole bunch. A whole bunch. It's, it's not just building gold traps. <laughs> Far from it. But anyway, I better let you all go. Um, thanks for taking the time for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if I wasn't on a leech right now, the uh, 1,000 subscriber giveaway is sitting way out back on the curing racks. And it is cured. The only thing I have to do to it now is the pin configuration, which is just a matter of drilling some holes and inserting the, the sleeve and cutting the pin. And it's done. And uh, I will be doing that video very, very shortly. Um, so we'll catch you all later. Um, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Take care. There, shop's all cleaned up for the day. I'm done. I'm done for the day. And uh, I still have to empty the garbage and pick up my piles, but that's okay. And, uh, yeah, 
Um, I think since I got back on the 10th of October, I believe it was the 10th. Yes, it was. The 10th of October I came back. I have taken exactly two, maybe three days off. Well, we've got some decent weather, so I am going to be hitting the river tomorrow and the next day. Um, today is what? Today is the 7th of November. So I'm going to be hitting the river. I showed you all this cleanup sluice that I made to work in tandem with the gold trap after you know running different different runs and doing clean outs you just dump it in a bucket and then at the end of the day you run your your concentrates through that um, but I added a slick plate to it since you saw it in that video so that'll be good now I can dump material on here and run it instead of dumping it on the end of the mat and I'll be using Alan Dampier I think his last name is I hope I got your last name right Alan um, Placer Tool is the best damn pan. I tried it here in the shop on some really, really, really fine, fine black sands with some extremely tiny gold without um, seasoning the pan. It's, it still has the oils on it from releasing it from the mold and manufacturing. And it, it kept that fine gold. I'm probably going to use it without the dam. But speaking of Dream Mat, I also picked up the... Uh, dream mat for the blue bowl so I'll be running concentrates through that this winter and checking that out I think that's pretty cool so thank you all for watching again and uh, I appreciate every single one of you so you take care enjoy